In this lesson, we'll look at how to use repeated measures analysis of variance to test differences in means by answering the following question. But before we start, repeated measurements are measurements made on the subject over a particular time. The purpose of these repeated measurements is to assess changes in the measurements of the subjects over time. An example of what I mean is shown below. We have n number of subjects, and measurements for each subject is taken over a period of time. To show you how this all works, we have the following question. The cardiovascular fitness of elite runners on three different 10-mile training courses were measured. Course 1 is flat, course 2 has graded inclines, and course 3 includes steep inclines. Each runner's heart rate is measured at mile 5 of the run on each course. 10 runners are involved, and their heart rates measured on each course is shown in this table. We have to find out if there's a significant difference in the mean heart rates of runners on the three courses. We have to run the appropriate test at a 5% level of significance. Now the procedure to doing this is a little different than a regular one-way ANOVA test because now there are multiple measurements taken on each subject. Therefore, we can now measure variation between subjects and treatments, whereas before we had only one measurement per subject for each treatment, so we couldn't measure between subjects. This is why the ANOVA table is a bit different. Take a look. It's because it includes another source of variation due to the subject. That being said, let's begin by writing out the hypothesis, the null and alternative hypothesis. This is the same thing as before with the regular one-way ANOVA. The null hypothesis will be that the means will not change from one course to the other. So I'll write down the mean of course one is equal to the mean of course two and that of course three. And the alternative is that there will be a difference in these means. So I'll write down at least two means differ. Next, we have to compute the test statistic. That's done by calculating the value of f, which we'll call f observed. And we do that by taking the mean square between and dividing it by the mean square within. This is the same thing as the one-way ANOVA test without repeated measures. And as you can see, once we fill in our table, it's this value divided by that value. Now, where do we start? This table is huge. You actually start by taking the average of all of these numbers found in this table. I truly recommend that you use some sort of software to help you out here. Now I've gone ahead and done it already, so I'll represent it right here. I'll say that the average of all of these values is equal to the sum of all of these values, which I'll represent as x sub ij over big N, and there are 30 pieces of data collected. 10 runners times 3 is 30. So we know that this big N is 30. The top number should equal to 4,328. Let's use our calculator. 4328 divided by 30 gives us 144.26 repeating. 144.26 repeating. Of course, you can round this to 144.3 for simplicity's sake. So I'll change this into decimal 3. Now, why do we need this? Looking back at this table, we have all the formulas that we need. We actually have to find the average for each runner. And let's extend this table. So we'll take the average of each. I'll take 132 plus 135 plus 138 and divide it by 3. Take that average and subtract it from the value that we just found of 144.3. So here I'll write down the average of the subjects. And I'll show you the first one and I'll fill in the table for you. So I'll write down 132 plus 135 plus 138 divided by 3. That value is 135. Then we'll take this value and subtract from it 144.3. So extending this table to one more column, we have this value minus that value. And not only do we just subtract it, but we also raise it to the power of 2. So 135 minus 144 decimal 3 raised to the power of 2. 
And you actually have to do this for each of these rows. I know this is a long process and this is why we use stats-based programs like SAS, but here's how to do it by hand. The rest of the values should look like this. Now, if you've done it correctly, these are the values that you should have found for these two columns. What I'll do next is add up all of these values, take the average of all of these values, the average of these, the average of those, and the average of course one, and write them down underneath. So first, let's take the sum. If you take the sum correctly, you should end up with 742.9, and this part represents the sum of that. Taking the average of these is the same thing as what you found here, 144.3. So I'll say that this part is the average of the data collected. The average of these is 139.1, and that's represented as sub one. Make sure you place that dot there. 144.9 and the average of those ones is 148.8. Okay, that's a lot of work. From these values, we can now find the between subject sum of squares. Let's go ahead and do that. The formula is K, which is the number of courses in this case, times this value, 472.9. SS subject is equal to K represented as three for those three courses, times the value right here, 742.9, 742.9. Multiplying these two numbers in your calculator, it's shown on the screen as 2228.7, 22 28.7, make sure that you put that into the ANOVA table where this cell belongs. Next, we'll calculate the between treatments sum of squares. So that's represented as SSB. And for that, we take the number of subjects, which is 10. Remember, this is a sum, okay? So we'll be doing this repeatedly. 10 times the average for each course. The average for the first course was 139.8. 1 minus the average of all of the numbers, and we found it was 144.3. 144.3, raise that to the power of 2, then we do it again. 10 bracket, this time 144.9 minus 144.3, raise to the power of 2. And 10 times 148.8 minus 144.3, raised to the power of two. If you substitute these values into your calculator correctly, you should end up with the following sum, 477, and you can verify that on your own. So let's put these two values into the ANOVA table. So that's the first value, and I have 477 underneath. Now let's calculate the within. So we take SS total, and that is found, let me show you, by taking the sum of all subjects squared, so that's xi raised to the power of two, minus the sum of all of them, and then raising that to the power of two. So all of this raised to the power of two divided by big N, which is 30. You can get this from your calculator. And if you do, you should get 627,362. From your calculator, this part, and I showed you this earlier, it was 4328, 4328, raise that to the power of two and divide by N. Your answer should be 2975.9. All right, why do we need that? Well, we're going to take this value, subtract it from that value. So I'll write down SSW is 2975.9 minus 2228.7 minus 477. The combined value should be 270.2. 270.2. And don't forget, 2975.9 goes there. Okay, the degrees of freedom column, this part gets easy. N minus 1, that's 9 because 10 minus one is nine. K minus one, that's two. For within, N minus one times K minus one. 
that's 18. And for total, it's nk minus 1. 3 times 10 is 30, minus 1 is 29. The last few things we need to find are these values, and then finally using those values to give us f observed. So we'll take SSB divided by the degrees of freedom. SSB is this number, 477 divided by 2, and then that number, 270.2 divided by 18. Remember, this part represents s squared b, and that part represents s squared w, which we'll use for f observed. This results to 238.5, and dividing these, you should end up with 15. So we take 238.5 divided by 15, and we get an f observed of 15.9. Next, we need to come up with a decision. And the decision rule requires we know what f critical is. And that's dependent on the alpha value, the degrees of freedom between and within. So dfb and dfw. We determined that in the question as 0.05. This one, degrees of freedom between, is 2. And that one is 18. We use the f distribution table to find this number. f critical should be. 3.55. Now take a look. F observed is much greater than F critical. Showing this on an F distribution table, F critical, let's say, is over here, 3.55. The fact that we have it at 15.9, this means that it falls in this region called the rejection region. If it falls here, then we reject the null hypothesis. We reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative, which was that there's at least two means different. The reason why we can do that is because we have sufficient evidence at 95 degrees significance level to conclude that there are at least two means different. So we reject this because we have enough evidence to favor that one. And there you have it. That is how to perform the repeated measures ANOVA test.